I won't go into the HTML and CSS that much because the main focus is obviously view.js and not these things. So we'll just um, we'll just go through it really quickly. So we have three containers in our game. We have one for the actual game itself, one for the info bar, and one for um, all the squares. So we'll make those containers right now. We'll make three separate divs. The first with an ID of game view, which represents the entire game itself, or you know the entire square itself with the um, with the border. One for uh, the info bar up top, so game view info, and one for the container for all the squares. If I do game view squares, that right there. So now we'll do the CSS for all these and make them look decent so we can see what's going on. So in the CSS, we'll just um, set some rules for game view. Not game view. Give it a width of 500 pixels and a margin of zero auto to center it in the middle. And a border of one pixel solid and black. What a classic, mate. Alrighty. Now for the game view info, uh, we'll set a padding of 15 pixels, make it look nice. Oh, oh no. We are a font family of probably sans serif will do a size of 20 pixels, a weight of bold, a liner in the center, All right, there we are, and a background color of light gray so it looks decent. Okay, now for the game view squares container, uh, we can give it a height. Well, the height of this will be the same width of the game view container. That way, back to the demo, that way this container right there is equal width and height, meaning it's a square. So we'll set it as the same width as this parent, so 500 pixels, and we'll display it as a flex box, and we'll allow flex wrap, that way we can have three separate rows. So flex wrap and wrap. That'll give us three separate rows and also a padding of 25 pixels, make it look decent and box sizing is border box so everything works smoothly. Alright, so back in our Chrome we can see we have the basic template. We have the info bar up top, the container for the whole game and also the squares container. So now we can actually represent each square on the board. So back in our HTML we can um, we can make a dummy div uh, which represents one of these squares and we'll give it a class of game view square and this will be just one you know sort of testing square so we can see what it looks like um, in the CSS we'll add, some, we'll add some more rules for that so we'll, get, we'll say game view square and give it a width of 33% well sorry 0.33% and the height as the same this way we get a nice 3x3 three three grid of squares. We we'll display as a flex box, a flex box, so we can uh, align the symbol inside it to the middle using align items and justify content. And a box sizing of border box, so it looks nice. For font family, I like to use the cursive um, font. That way it looks all fun and you know like a game. Give it a font size of 75 pixels and we'll transform all the text to uppercase. There we are. And the border radius, we'll set that to 15 pixels so we get that nice curved effect on the bottom or you know in the corners. And a cursor will be pointer because we're going to be actually selecting these obviously. And we'll make it so the user can't highlight these. So we'll say user select equal to none. And same for Firefox. There we are. Now we need to actually set the highlighted, um, the highlighted class styles. So when the game view square has, well, when a game view square is highlighted, so dot highlighted. So when a div has the game view square class and the highlighted class, we want the color to be green, just like that. Uh, we also need to actually add some effects to the game view square. So when it's uh, when it's hovered over, make a grey background colour, a light grey, 
and this right here, I'll just copy and paste this right here, but this will, uh, you know, make those those four lines so everything's separated. So we'll just uh, refresh the page now and we can see we have one square right here. We'd actually, we forgot to put in the value. So give it a value of x. There we are, back in here. Now we get one square with the value of x. We'll actually just go ahead and make two squares right here in a row. We we'll give this one a value of O and set the highlighted class to it, just like that. We'll refresh and we get two squares, one having the green uh, effect, sorry, the green color and also these will be highlighted when you hover over them. So that's all for the CSS. We'll now get right into the view stuff, the good stuff. So, we can start by making a new view object. So in the JS, we'll just make a new variable. We'll call this game view. This will be a new object of type view. And we'll pass in some properties here. First one being EL, which refers to uh, the actual entire application itself in HTML. So in our case, it'll be the ID game view. And that just says, all right, this is our entire application right here in HTML. Next, we'll need the data property, which uh, refers to the information or the object that you want to be updated as it changes. So in our case, it'll be active game. So we're saying, whenever this changes, we want view to represent those changes in the HTML. So it now has access to all of our properties right here. With this now, we can actually uh, display all our nine squares on the screen. We can do this by defining one single div class. So we'll do this, give it a class of game view square. So that is one square object, only one square div. With this one, we can actually make nine of them very easily. We'll go down here and we'll make a new v4 attribute. This is a special attribute part of view that allows you to make um, multiple of the same template, basically, for each uh, element in the array you're looping through. So basically what it means is that if we type in squares, i, in squares, it will make a new div. It will just copy this right here for each square in our array. So this right here actually refers to this right here. And we have these two temporary variables. Uh, sorry, that should be square and i. So square is the single object of square. And i is the index we're currently at. So if we refresh the browser right now, we should see nine squares on the screen. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Nice and easy. It was so easy and simple to do that. Um, so next we can actually add an event listener for this. So again, we can use a v on uh, attribute, v on click. So when one of these squares is clicked on, we want to call the make move method on the active game global uh, object. So active game dot make move passing in i, which will be either 0, 3, 4, whatever index we're up to. Passing in i refers to this i right here. So now we actually are calling the make move function when we click on one of the squares. Um, we need to actually see that in action. So we can actually type in in here, we can put two curly braces right here. We say here, we'll say square which is this square right here, dot value. This will print out or, you know, display the value property of the square. So now, back in the browser, we should be able to actually play the game, sort of. We click on a square and we see the value changes, just like that. So, so simple. Just to recap, we have uh, on the click, we want to 
call the make move function of active game, passing in the index of the square we're trying to make a move on, and then inside the div for each each square, we're just printing out the value of that square. So make move will change that value right in here, and then it will be updated so instantly on the screen. Next, we need to actually. Uh, add the highlighted class inside a div which has the is highlighted property set to true we can do that by using this attribute right here v bind class and typing this in and say highlighted square dot is highlighted this just means if this is true, so if the square is highlighted, then add highlighted to the class list. So now, back in the web browser, we'll refresh and we'll click on the first index 0. Inside our game, we'll say active game dot squares at index 0 dot is highlighted. Make it equal to true. Press enter, boom. Now it's green. So that works. Now, we can basically play the game. Before that though, we'll just, um, we'll just finish off the info message box. So in here we need to actually uh, display things such as it's O's turn, it's X's turn, it's been a draw, or somebody wins. So down inside the view object, we'll make a new property called computed. And this is basically a way we can define sort of dynamic properties to our data uh, property based on a function call. So for example, if we say info message and make a function and just return mouse, for example, and back up here in curly braces. If we just try and print our info message, we should see mouse in the top bar. So we'll refresh the page and we see mouse because we're calling, well, we're sort of calling this function right here, which is returning mouse, and that just sort of works. That's how view is. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So, but with this, though, we can actually put some logic in here, which is the reason why we use computed. We can say, if this, by the way, this refers to this right here, which refers to this. So we're saying this dot in progress. So if the game is in progress, then we'll return it's, it is plus this dot current turn plus turn. That just says it is currently, sorry, it is X's turn or it is O's turn. So this refers to the active game right here because this also refers to data. Next we can say, all right, if there's a winner, then we we'll return this dot winner plus wins. So all these properties here are part of the uh, game class. So winner in progress, just like that. We can also say, if there's no winner and the game is in is not in progress, then it's a tie. There's no winner and the game is not currently in progress. We'll just return, it was a draw. Just like that. And that is the entire game made right there. Very sick. Go in the browser and refresh and we'll see our result. Alright, so the game works, uh, we can play it, uh, the symbols will turn green when you win, and the text up top changes. So I hope I've demonstrated the power of Vue.js through this simple example. It shows how we can build reactive uh, views and everything will sort of change as the model changes.